Hi guys, Todd here. Now, a strange one for you. Uh, during my vaping life, um, two of the, the best things I've ever done was make my own mods. I've done it twice and I... And if anybody mentions magnets, I'll, I'll flip. But um, I so enjoyed it and it, it's just a really rewarding thing to do. There is nothing quite like holding a mod in your hand, having a vape and going, I made that. Up here just now you'll hopefully see a list of items that you can buy and you can make your own mechanical 3D printed squonker. Now I'm not disputing the fact that now you can actually go and you can buy things like the Van de Vape one for like 25 to 30 pound. Pre-made, it comes assembled, you're good to vape away you go. That to me, I think that's a brilliant thing that they're coming in at that price point. But there is something that really appeals to me about just making my own one or assembling the parts because I never printed this enclosure myself. This just arrived five minutes ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this right now and, um, and hopefully you'll see how I managed to make a balls up of it. No, hopefully this goes okay. Right, close ups. So this is everything you're going to need. Now for full transparency, uh, I bought this, I bought this from Sleds UK. Uh, this is what started it all off, was this little 3D printed box. But it also comes with a button and you can get this in multiple colours and materials and I'll talk about that at the end. These copper strips here I got from Rick at modmaker.co.uk. This is a tool for punching a dimple in the contacts as well. Uh, this is a Modmaker 510, Squonking 510. These are the 22mm washers. Rick sent me on different finishes, so, you know, I could, if I wanted, I could have a black one. Oh, that might actually look quite cool in there. A black one like that. Hmm. And last but not least, some ma <laughs> magnets. Uh, I don't have a good track record with magnets, but, you know, you're just going to get the three magnets and they're just going to be glued in here. Now I'm going to use an epoxy, two part epoxy. I'll not do this on camera because it takes time for them to set and so on. Um, you could if you wanted, you could super glue them in there, but uh, I prefer to use the epoxy. Here is inside the box, so you can see it's been printed with positive and negative already. It's got sleds going on there. and. Yeah, it's not bad. It's it's not, you know, for what is essentially, what, 10, 11 quid it costs. Uh, Me, if I was being picky, and I am being picky here, I mean, there's that's, that's lots of lines on it. It's not completely flat. Uh, I can, yeah, it's, there's a, it's not a flat surface in the bottom. There is a curve going on there. So, yeah, but as I said, for the money, um, yeah, it's not bad. Now the first thing we're going to do is, you know, I've put my little washer in there and that's going to slide through here like that, but you have to get this contact set up. So I'm just going to kind of like guesstimate this, well not guesstimate it, but you know, I can see that it's going to go on like that. So I'm going to have to cut this, you know, just at the end here. So I'd recommend getting a pen and just, you know, holding it up there and you can see where that gets to the edge there and just marking it there and then you're ready to take, you know, just bend this bit off. Now I've cut mine using uh, a proper pair of uh, tin snips. But what you can do is just get a pair of pliers and, and you know, just clamp it. Make sure you're clamping it in a, I know, a straight line and then just bend the copper down bend it back up, bend it down, and it will snap. It'll snap and give you a clean line there, no problem. So I got this dimple tool as well from Rick. So I want to put a little dimple there just so it makes contact. And so just go outside, find a bit of soft wood, and then you're just gonna put this down flat somewhere, get a hammer, and just give that a good old thump. So you can see here that yeah, I've got a little dimple on there and you know if it bends it at all you know just grab your tweezers again or whatnot and then just on the outside edge just flatten it out and make sure everything's neat and tidy. Now this is personal choice you don't have to do this but I would recommend getting a little bit of sandpaper and see your, your leading edge there and just give it a tiny little sand you know you can go over it with you know 80, 100, 200 grit doesn't really matter you're just wanting to 
take that leading edge off there. Once again, you don't have to do it, but I just like to do it by choice. Washers in. Pop in my uh, little 510 there. Take my contact. It just drops in there. I do like the fact that, see the battery tray there? It does stop, so, you know, your copper contact just kind of falls into a little gap there. Grab your nut. Make sure you keep that pin down with your finger there. And just drop that on. Now you can use a pair of uh, pliers once again, needle nose pliers to tighten that up. I lucky I do have an actual, you know, a proper. This is from C's Mods, um, and it's just a, a little spanner. I think Rick might actually do these as well at Mod Maker. And there we go, nice and tight. And there's my contact in. Now what I'm going to do here now is, and this is just, you know, I could leave a flat edge there if I wanted to, but I like to fold it over just a little bit, just to kind of reduce the throw on the switch. So what I'm going to do is take my, my needle nose pliers here and I'm just going to fold this over. Now the reason for doing this is that, you know, if you find the the throw is just a little bit too long, then I can bend this out, that little lip, I can just bend it out a little bit and it will reduce the throw for me. So you don't have to, but I prefer to. Now you're going to want to gauge, you know, so where this is going to sit and of course it's going to get pushed across like that, you know, where you want your contact to sit. So I'm going to line my box up here make sure this is lining up with you know this little contact nut here and then you're going to take a pen and then what you would do is you would mark at this right angle here on the box see at the corner of the box you would mark there and just take a line across here so I've made my mark here so you're wanting a right angle bend here so I'm just using a pair of pliers here I'm just going to clamp it right on that line and I'm just going to bend it. And that's about it. You really want that to be as sharp an angle as you can get it. And mine is maybe just a little bit too rounded there, but it'll do for now. And then the last thing you're going to do is, once again, you know, you're going to line this up here. And you're going to, you can see that this contact here is coming out too far. Take a line, you know, from the bottom corner again, and then cut the excess off. Once I've got that cut and I've test fitted it, made sure it's alright, I then want to go and put another dimple in the bottom of here. And once again, you know, just make sure that, you know, you want to make sure this is perfectly flat here at the bottom. You know, get in, if you've hit it too hard, you can see I've got a little curve there, uh, and just get that straightened out. And once again, personal choice, if you want, you can sand down the leading edge a little bit. It just stops your battery wraps getting caught on it or causing any damage. So it's just personal choice. And the last thing you have to do is uh, drop your contact in. Now you can see that there's a gap just inside there, inside the box. So this should, on a good day, should just slot in here. And just push this down. This should push down. And that's, that's that pushed in. Uh, can that go in any further, I think? Now, the only thing I've noticed is that I'm using one of the, the original ModMaker 510, uh, MM510s that's sent on. Now, the later ones do come with, uh, you can get a, a bigger nut version. Um, so I'm just going <laughs> to hastily switch this out because you can see there's a hell of a travel from here to here to make that contact. So here's a, a one that I have from a, another mod here, from a newer mod, so I'm just going to spin that on like that. That's better. It's still got a, a fair bit of travel there to go. So what I'm going to have to do is take my contact strip out and then just bend this lip out again. So there you go, I've bent it out a little bit, I've got the bigger nut on here, and that's making contact fine. Now what I could have also have done is stuck a bit of tape on the back of the button here as well. I've done that with some, you know, mods that have been sent on for review, but yeah, making contact there, fine. Modmaker 510 Squonk Bottle in, 18650 battery, 
one atty. Let's pop the door on. Once again, I've not put my magnets on yet, and <laughs> it works. This is, I've literally just test fired that in the close up there, and I've just cut to up close. So that's a, a drop RDA that's on there, and here we go. works <laughs> right this works the same as any other mech squonker I have it, it works exactly the same there's no difference uh, the only difference is that um, honestly it's just, it's just the case uh, the enclosure that's the only difference uh, the mod maker 510 uh, the mod maker squonky bottle the copper strip is much the same, if not exactly the same, as nearly all the other mech squonkers I have here. Uh, the difference is the enclosure, and the enclosure cost me about £11. Now, uh, being brutally honest, um, I was expecting more from the enclosure. I know that sounds a bit arsey. Uh, I mean, I know it's only just over a tenner, uh, but the print quality is... is it, it could have been better. Being quite honest, it could have been better. Um, I mean, it is just down here, It's there's a big curve in it and it's not perfectly flat. But in saying that, uh, the fact that the tray is there, uh, you know, rather than your contact just flapping about inside the box, it does have those little cutouts so that your contact sits in there and it's, it's trapped. So, I mean, I've had some mech squonkers from certain parts of the world that cost near £200 and they didn't even have that in there. So, in that respect, I'm, I am impressed. The door fits well. I mean, I've not even bothered putting the magnets in there and, and it's held on quite tight. It looks not bad. Uh, obviously, you can customise the colours any way you want. There's this thing inside you that's just picks this up and goes, I made this. Uh, it's something in your head that just gives you that little bit of extra satisfaction. Um, another vape. Now, one thing I want to make clear is when you buy the enclosure, the, this is a 3D printed mod. If you know how 3D printing works, then just ignore me. But for those of you that don't, the way it works is your filament is just passed through a heated nozzle and then it makes the shape of the enclosure. So they use heat to make the box. So if you apply a lot of heat to a 3D printed box, then it will deform, it'll melt, but you have to apply constant heat and a lot of it. Now that means that if you vape below 0.2 and chain vape, you'll melt your box. Normal vaping, I mean I am vaping a 0 0.25 ohm build here and I'm taking an occasional vape here, you won't have any issues but below 0 0.2 constant hard chain, no, don't do it or don't do it with a 3D printed mech mod like this. As always I'm not saying that is gospel, hard facts, it's just my humble opinion and my taking it so just bear it in mind. Uh, I mean, I think this is made from ABS or PETG, but I would check there is a description. In fact, I think I'll pop it up here. I know he's got some text on the site that actually details uh, what you should and shouldn't be doing with this mech mod, or this enclosure, I should say. Now, I did mention the little positive nut. Now, so I've got a little small positive nut for this uh I think you're definitely going, going to have to go and get the, the ModMaker 510 large positive nut. There is quite a distance between, you know, the positive and the fire button. So that's an extra 99 pence on the total. You, I could have done this all with a pair of needle nose pliers and, and, and it would have worked, no problem. Um, I mean, literally just clamp, marking the copper where you want to cut it and then just snipping it like that, holding it, and then just bending it backwards and forwards, and it will snap at a right angle. Uh, it's really easy to do. I did this in 20 minutes flat. 
20 minutes I did this in and I probably could have done it quicker if it wasn't fanning about with a camera. The dimple tool, I mean that's it's nice to have and it's really easy to use. I mean any kind of rounded object would have done the same thing. Um, it just helps make it a little bit easier. The magnets, you know, I prefer to use an epoxy, two part epoxy, just make sure it holds it in there. Uh, you can use super glue if you want, it's entirely up to you, but my track record with magnets isn't that great. The big thing is that this costs between 25 and 30 pounds, okay? Uh, now things have changed, you've got the Pulse. I could go and buy the Pulse uh, Van De Vape Squonker between 25 and 30 pounds. and it will be finished better than this. No two ways about it. I would have this every single day of the week. <laughs> and the reason is that I assembled this. I didn't make the parts, but I did put them all together. So there's a little, tiny little bit of me invested into this little mod. And that just gives, that does it for me. I'm not saying that this is better in any shape or form. I mean, this is, once again, the enclosure's a little bit on the uh, side, but it's got a bit of me in it, and for that just makes it worth every single penny. It's great, bloody great. I uh, just want to say thank you to Rick, uh, as always at Mod Maker, because I, some of these parts were things that I've had lying about from in the past and some of them we sent them on to me gratis, you know, gave them to me free, which is, is awesome as always. Uh, I paid for the enclosure, uh, thanks to Axe for sending that on. Uh, if you're interested, all the links will be in the description. But listen, this was just a little bit of fun. I, I hope it piqued your interest and if you're curious, go and give it a bash. I know a ton of folk have gone and bought these already just after me posting about it. And there's folk posting up their finished products on Facebook already. But that's it from me. Guys, as always, thank you for watching. Until next time, bye for now.